In this video, I want to talk about vision, and specifically using the limelight for vision. So one of the things that uh, you'll find in an FRC, on an FRC field are these things called April tags. And April tags are essentially these QR codes created by the University of Michigan. And each QR code has a unique ID and is placed in a unique location on the field. So if you know the ID of an April tag, then you know where the April tag is on the field. So one of the reasons why um, April tags are put on the field is because they're incredibly useful for robot vision. And especially, and some of the use cases um, are to line up with the scoring location. So, you know, if you can see an April tag in your view, you can move your drivetrain to line up perfectly center onto the April tag. And another reason why it's useful is for updating the robot's position and code. So what a lot of teams may do is, what a lot of teams tend to do rather, is create some sort of auto scoring type control where the drivetrain will automatically maneuver itself during teleop to a specific scoring location. And that's dependent on knowing where the robot is on the field. And one of the biggest use cases of an April tag is to constantly update where the robot is on the field. So you'll notice that um, I've got the April tag images and user guide up for um, the 2023 charged up game. Um, you'll notice that the April tags are on a bunch of these different field elements. You've got one on the double substation, the single substation um, area, you know, the, the loading zone area. Um, you also got three of them in the community area. So they're everywhere. And here's what an April tag looks like kind of reminiscent of a QR code, and they each have an ID. And so these April tags are placed, and if you can, see, and if your robot's camera can see one of these April tags, then it knows the distance away it is from the April tag, right? Like if I'm standing two feet away from an April tag, then the robot camera is able to see, or rather the limelight, which we'll talk about in a bit, is able to see that it's two feet away from the April tag. Now the cool thing is, is that you know where the April tag is because you know because the camera is able to identify what the April tag's ID is. Because remember, each ID has a unique look. This is ID one, that's ID two. Completely different looks, right? So each ID um, is unique, and based on whatever ID it sees, it knows the location. So we know where the April tag is and we know where a robot is relative to the April tag, like whether it's two feet away, two feet to the left, et cetera. We know what that is. And so we can do a little bit of math to figure out exactly where the robot is on the field. And it's because we have all these April tags around the field that we're able to update the robot's location. So two main use cases, lining up with scoring locations or having some auto scoring capabilities and also updating the robot's position on the field. Now you might be wondering, well, can't I just use the drivetrain to figure that out? Because like the drivetrain itself, because WPI Lab actually has um, an odometry utility that does some math based to figure out how far the wheel has traveled. So can I just use that? And in some cases, yes, but the problem is that you're running into robots, you're going over cable protectors, the charge station, which in the case of the 2023 game, and you know, there's just a lot of potential error for um, predicting where your robot is just by using the wheels themselves. So that's why we have April tags to constantly update that so that we actually know where it is, uh, where the um, robot is in the first place without any, without causing the collisions or, you know, bumping into things, driving over weird surfaces, etc., to cause any problems. So that's why um, April tags are super important. So one of the ways that we can um, see April tags and do things with them is with something called a limelight. So I've got that web page over here. This is the website for the limelight. And all it is is really it's just a series. It's just a camera with a series of these bright green lights. Now, the bright green lights are no longer um, super important because they have to do with retroreflective tape, which is now phased out of first competition. So um, we're just using, we're just concerned about the camera. So all it is is it's a camera, and what it does is it takes all the information that it could possibly see about an April tag, and it posts that information to something called a network table. Now, network table is something in WPI Lib, and what we can do is take the information that the limelight has posted onto the network table about the April tag, and then in code we can pull that information from the network table. 
So the reason why we use the limelight is it's one of the most, I would say most popular FRC um, vision systems out there. It's also pretty small and easy to interface with. There's really, you know, uh, besides just imaging software onto it, there's really no external setup you need to do other than, you know, tuning it to make sure it sees everything correctly, etc. That's with every camera system anyway. So we like it because it's small. We've worked with it before and it seems to be um, reliable for us. So the next question we need to answer is, well, what do we what do we use the limelight for to figure out? So the limelight posts a lot of information, but mainly it was kind of like what I was saying before. From the limelight, we can figure out our X and Y distance away from an April tag. So how far away are we vertically? How far away we are horizontally? So we can get the information from an April tag so long as it's in view. And uh, we can also get the ID of the tag. We can also get the position of the tag within the field. So all of this information is posted onto a network table. So remember, Limelight goes to the network table, and then we go to the network table and take that information in code. So let's talk about actually, you know, getting that information from the network table, which again is being is constantly being updated from the Limelight. So what I want to do is, and I'll do this um, inside subsystems, is just create a new. Um, what I like to call a limelight, we'll call it a limelight interface. And it's just going to be a normal class, something commands, something like that. So make sure you um, add a dot Java after. So here we've got our class. Now the first thing that we need to do is instantiate the network table itself. So to do that, uh, we uh, do private static network table. Um, and we'll call the network table limelight because we're using it in the case of a limelight. Just import network table real quick, and it's gonna. And in order to instantiate it, it's network table instance. Dot get default. Dot get table, and the table that we're getting is the name of your limelight. So one of the things that I want to point out is that in order to set up your limelight, um. Limelight over here has a bunch of different downloads that you can go to. They also have their own documentation. Um, so you can go ahead and look at that if you want to get into more detail. For now, I'll just be covering the basics. Um, and you'll see they have a Limelight Finder tool. Go ahead and install that. Um, and they also have all of the um, operating systems that can run on the Limelight. So you're going to need to be able to flash that. So again, this is all covered in like the documentation on how to get started with the Limelight. So I highly recommend reading that if this is the first time you're setting one up. Um, and so what you can do is you can identify your limelight and then it'll take you to the IP, it'll give you the IP address of the limelight. So if your robot's on and you're connected to it, you can go ahead and access the limelight directly through the, um, through its IP address. And then from there you can configure limelight, give it a name, all that fun stuff. So over here, um, this key right here is the name of your limelight. So in this case, We'd like to keep it simple and call it limelight. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but remember to put the name of your limelight as the argument for get table. So that's instantiating the network table. Um, the next thing that um, we're going to do is write some methods. So one of the things that um, these network tables return are doubles and arrays of doubles. So we need to be able to get these entries um, from the network table itself. So the, again, the two main data types are doubles and double arrays. So let's make helper methods that return these doubles for us. So we're going we're gonna to get a double entry. So I'll get double entry and string entry. And I'll explain what that is um, once we start writing some more methods. So all it is is going to get the data from the network table itself. It's going to be return limelight. Again, that's our network table dot get entry and our um, entry is going to be our uh, string right there that that entry key and it's going to be dot get double and this default value for now is zero don't worry so much about what that actually means just know that you have to pass it as zero next thing we're going to return is a double array because that's the other type that we're going to be working with so it's going to be get array entry string entry and it's going to be very similar um, return Limelight dot get entry dot get double array and we're just gonna pass in a new double array. Um you can specify the length of this array. So 
one thing that you need to keep in mind is that depending on what data types are actually, or what um, the size of the data is, you can see that on alignment documentation. It's typically six, so six is a fair um, number to pass in. Oh, I forgot to make it public over there. So you can make this of length six, but again, I would double check to make sure that the arrays that the line light um, is returning isn't more than of length six. You can double check that on the documentation. Okay, so let's write a few methods to get us started. So the first method that I want to write is a method that returns the ID of the April tag. So it's going to be public double get ID. Now again, this is the ID of the April tag that the limelight is currently seeing. So all we're going to do is return a double because again, the ID is going to be in the form of a double. Now, here's the thing, in order to access the data that the limelight is putting onto the network table, you have to specify the key that we are looking for. So in this case, and you can um, pull up the entire chart of um, keys on the limelight documentation, but in the case of um, ID, the title for the, key, the um, I guess the row, if you will, associated with getting the ID of the April tag is TID, target ID. That's what it's abbreviated for. So with this, what it's, so essentially just to recap, what this is going to do um, is going to call this method and limelight is going to look for an entry called TID, which is the ID of your limelight, and it's going to return it as a double. So that allows you to get the ID of an April tag. So again, all we're doing is we're going into the network table of the limelight itself. And inside the network table, we're seeing, we're asking for whatever value is currently populated by TID. So the next thing that I want to do is write a method that returns the um, area of the April tag. So Again, this is going to be a double, is get, we'll call it get target area. And we're going to return get double entry. And the um, target area is just TA. So that's the area. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have a valid target, right? I want to make sure that the, um, that the April tag I'm looking at is, you know, an, a, an appropriate April tag because Sometimes your vision could bug out and show you and randomly pick up an April tag that is an April tag with ID like 30 or something, which doesn't really make much sense. So you want to make sure that you have a valid target. So what we're going to do is return a Boolean, or, or sorry, has valid target, not get valid target. And we're going to return get double entry and TV target valid. And we want to make sure that it's equal to 1.0 because 1.0 indicates that the limelight has a valid target if it's one. If it's not a valid target, it's zero. The next method that we'll write is our um, x offset. So public boolean, or sorry, not boolean, public double get x offset. And we're going to return get double entry. Yes, and that's your horizontal offset. Now, another thing that the limelight can do is actually give you the pose of your robot, and that's in the form of a double array. So get dot pose, and we're gonna return get array entry, and dot pose under force target space. Now. Um, one thing to keep in mind, one thing you'll see on the limelight documentation itself is that there's a different, there are different types of bot, pose, bot poses. I believe it's target space and also field space. Target space is the pose relative to the target. Um, and field space is the pose relative to the WPI field coordinate system. So those are two things to keep in mind. Um, relative to the target, meaning how far it is, assuming that the target you're looking at is zero, zero. And field, obviously, kind of like how we how I showed you in Pathfinder with the previous video. Field relative is starting, is using that WPI load coordinate system starting at zero, zero um, at the bottom of the field. So yeah, that's a quick introduction to um, some of the things, some of the um, information we can access with the limelight. Um, there's actually a lot more that you could access. And again, feel free to check around the limelight documentation. 
Um, if you go over to the website, you can head over to documentation. And they've got a basic um, setup. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> they have a basic um, setup page. And they also have a whole thing on tracking April tags and how it all works, how to set it up, um, and all of that fun stuff. And here they show you the difference between target space, robot space, field space, all that fun stuff. And as you continue, you can even find um, uh, the positions of all the April tags this is for 2023. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I believe if you um, continue browsing the, um, I think it's a network, it's somewhere here. Um, if you continue browsing it, you should be able to find a a table of all the um, network of, of all the values that the Limelight publishes in a network table. I wonder if you can find it right now. Let's see. Basic programming, I bet it's here. Yep, there you go. So here's where you can find um, how to get all the um, values from the line, quote unquote network, Limelight network table. And yeah, so that wraps it up in terms of limelights. Um, you can feel free to explore different methods on um, the different methods that you can write to get the April tags information from the limelight. Um, obviously, the use case is going to be very specific to each year's game. So, in the case of twenty twenty three, um, it's useful to know where you are relative to the target, at least for our robot. But obviously, it's going to depend um, year over year and robot over robot. So. Yeah, have fun trying to explore with this. Obviously, you can look over the limelight documentation and figure out all the different types of data that you can access. I just wrote, we just wrote here a few different methods. Um, and yeah, so what you can do is actually, uh, before we uh, conclude the video, is you can create an instance of this in robot container. And I believe this is an actual thing. Or um, what I would do actually, not in robot container, it's in one of your subsystems. Um, Let's let's use drive subsystem because that's typically where we um use limelight um and get limelight information. So we made a quick instance of limelight or limelight interface. What you can do is inside periodic, you can put the smart dashboard any number that any value that you want. So let's say April tag ID. Oops, not page tag. Um, and then you can do limelight interface dot get ID. And now you can print out the ID of the April tag that your limelight is able to see. So go ahead and add these print statements, try it out, add more methods, see if, <laughs> try to get all the information you can from that one April tag. And yeah, that's about it um, for limelights. And we'll see you in the next video.